the first thing I heard that made me say, you know what, I want to be a musician myself, was when I heard uh, the Jackson Five. I was 10 years old, and I think Michael Jackson was probably 10 or 11 years old himself. And to see people who are your own age, who are that fantastic, it's just exciting, man. It just, it just made you so crazy. You said, man, I, I can do that, you know? I already love music, and that's when I began. So the first thing I did was I joined a singing group. And then, uh, you know, I just didn't want to stand there and sing, so I started playing the bass. You know, I wanted an instrument that I could play in an R&B situation. So I started playing bass guitar. I also play the piano. My father's a piano player, and I was imitating him from when I was uh, two years old. You know, they have pictures of me with his glasses on and a checkerboard for my music, and I'm playing the piano, you know. Uh, so although I never took formal lessons on the piano, I've been playing it a very long time, you know. I began the clarinet when I was about 10 years old, and if you learn the clarinet, then you can transition pretty easily to saxophone. And uh, from the bass, you can learn the guitar. I knew I had some friends who were basketball players, and they were so intense about practicing that the coach at the school would say, look, here's the key to the gym. You know, whenever you want to practice, you, you can get in. Well, my music teacher gave me the key to the music room. <laughs> and he said, look, whenever you want to go in there and fool around. And I used to love just going around and exploring the different instruments. People ask me, uh, what kind of music do you play? And I say, I don't know what to call it, you know? The easiest, the easiest suggestion is that uh, we play funk on the bottom and jazz on the top. But the more detailed explanation is that the music I play is basically soul music. You know, it's R&B, it's funk, and uh, it's got a lot of pop elements. But the difference is that we play it with a jazz spirit. So if you're a funk band, you play the music the same way every night. Sometimes more energy, sometimes less energy, but the notes never change. And for me, the notes always change. The thing about jazz that I always loved was um, jazz always had a great connection to pop music. The jazz music that I always loved was when Sonny Rollins would play an old Broadway song, or Miles Davis would play an old, an old popular song. Jazz was always very closely related to pop music. The bebop guys, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, most of their songs were based on old show tunes, you know, that everyone knew. And basically what jazz musicians were saying was we can take this music that everyone knows and we can show you the possibilities. We can show you how far that music can be developed. And I always thought that was the most fascinating thing about jazz. If I had to use one word today, I play fusion music because I take the elements from here, I take the elements from here, and I combine them together. Where you come from as a musician is really uh, everything. You know, um, you know, if you hear somebody speak, within two sentences of them speaking, you basically have a good idea of where they're from. Their accent, the words they choose, you know? And it's the same thing with music. When you heard Miles Davis play, you knew that he was from St. Louis. He was from, you know, that, that culture. And when you hear me play, you know I'm from New York. There was funk in the streets, there was salsa music here, there was reggae, there was African, there was calypso. There's everything going on at the same time. And as a musician in New York, you had to be familiar with all those different styles. I went to California and played, and the drummer said, man, why you play so angry, man? 
You play like you're mad at somebody. I said, really? No, I'm not mad, it's just. But I realized in New York, when we went to the clubs, the people didn't want to hear jazz. So if you're going to play jazz for the people, you had to play it very aggressively, like you really mean it, to get their attention. Johnny Lister Smith in the 70s, he was like the first like um, uh, trip hop player to me, <laughs> you know? His band played funk music and he played these kind of um, atmospheric keyboards over it and it was a very, very distinct style that uh, we all grew up with. And I actually got to uh, do some records with him. It was like my first stuff. I met Marcus Miller when he was 15 going on 16. Had his hat all turned around. I'm not gonna turn my hat around. and. We were jamming somewhere in Queens. That's where that Funkin' for Jamaica came from. And um, I said, wow, this, this boy sounds good. So then after we finished jamming, he put his bass down. He said, I got a song for you. So I'm looking at this little kid, I'm saying, mm. I said, okay. He sat down at, 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 the, at, the, at the piano and started playing Journey Into Love. Doom, 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 doom. And then start, I said, oh, you have a song for me, don't you? And I took him right into the studio. I think it's on Loveland. And all the, I mean, the producer, all the musicians saw me bringing this little kid in. And oh man, they got all upset, got a terrible attitude. And a few minutes later now, I can't get to him. They're all surrounding him. Man, he can play, he sounds good. I'm just, Miles has a young musician, he catches them at that stage. And he knows what's the future. And I remember when Miles was getting ready to hire Marcus, what he does is he called musicians and he said, well, what do you think of Marcus? So the first thing I said, good, you have found your twin. So he said, oh, you, you still strange. But what I meant was, Miles is Gemini, Marcus is Gemini. The two twins, so I said, yeah, you found your twin. And I said, it's gonna work. And the rest is history.